The uh, Royal Finance Corporation was run by Hernandez Cataya, who was one of the people, along with Howard Hunt, who had masterminded the Bay of Pigs invasion. Now, in the Watergate tapes, don't they sound like Babe Russell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the Watergate tapes, you find that Howard Hunt demanded a million dollars. Among other things, he not only threatened to tell the truth about Watergate, but he said he'd reveal that whole Bay of Pigs thing. And, and Nixon says, oh, we can't let him talk about that Bay of Pigs thing. I'll get the million dollars. I know how to get a million dollars. Remember that part of the tapes? And does anybody remember? It was way back. It was 73. Does anybody remember that far back? <laughs> you, can, you, you can still see dramatizations of these tapes with Rip Torn playing Nixon. <laughs> uh, what Bay of Pigs thing was Nixon so worried about that he was willing to pay a million dollars? I thought all the Bay of Pigs secrets were out by 73. Apparently there was something that, they, that was still hidden in 73. And Nixon paid a million dollars to keep it covered up, and it hasn't come out yet. Hunt kept his mouth shut. Hunt's wife got the first payment of the million dollars, got on a plane, and the plane crashed just short of Chicago Airport, you may remember. The pilot was found to have an unusual concentration of cyanide in his blood. But the investigator who was appointed by Nixon, Nixon threw out the head of the FAA, which investigates such things, and put in somebody else who announced, oh, it's normal for people to have that much time to have plane crash. That's, that's what they say, I swear, that's what they say. <laughs> when Ronald Reagan took off, this Ichio Jelly was a guest at the inaugural party. Remember Ichio Jelly? He was the one who set up this whole uh, organization between the Knights of Walter, the CIA, and the cocaine business, and the death squads, and uh, Klaus Barbie and his old friends from the Gestapo. Uh, in... 1944, before the invasion of Sicily, the OSS, the parent of the CIA, uh, went to uh, Lucky Luciano, who was serving a term for procuring, or for running a prostitution ring, or whatever the hell is the legal term for it. And they told Lucky Luciano, we'll get you out of prison early if you will send messages to your friends in the Sicilian Mafia to help the American troops in the invasion rather than opposing them. Luciano agreed. The invasion of Sicily went off very smoothly and quickly, and the American intelligence community found itself uh, married to the Mafia from then on. They never did get untangled. After the war, they used the Mafia to uh, attack the French labor unions in southern France, and then on with, uh, through Licio Gelli, they went after the Italian labor unions and so on. And uh, it gets harder and harder as uh, they generate decades pass from the 1940s to the present. You can never say this was mafia or this was CIA. The two are so intertwined that all you can say is this was mafia and or CIA. On the other hand, William Casey, who died while under investigation in the Iran Contra, Wait a minute, that was General Mussolini. He died while under investigation of the Bologna Railway bomb. Oh, it happened to, it happened to William Casey, too. Uh, people under investigation often die suddenly. It's, uh, it's the stress of publicity, I guess. Uh, William Casey, like General Mussolini, was a knight of Malta. Just like Licio Gelli, who set this whole thing up. Just like Roberto Calvi, who ran the Banco Ambrosiano and the Cisalpine Bank with Archbishop Marchinkas. Roberto Calvi was found hanging from a bridge in London on June 18, 1982. Uh, Scotland Yard ruled that it was suicide. There was a lot of criticism in the English newspapers, and there was especially a hell of a lot of criticism of the fact that the uh, Cali was a Freemason, and the detective who investigated for Scotland Yard was a Freemason, too. And the Cali was found hanging with a rising tide that covered his dead body. Now, the first degree oath in Freemasonry includes, or used to include, they changed it since Calvi's death, by the way. <laughs> it used to include, and if I ever betray my fellows in the craft, May I be hanged where the rising tide will cover my dead body. Which uh, pretty clearly indicates that Calvi was killed by his fellow Freemasons, or by somebody who ardently wishes us to think he was killed by his fellow Freemasons. <laughs> his wife claims he was killed by the Vatican. Uh, Clara Calvi has said consistently from the beginning, from the time Calvi was found hanging from the bridge, she still says, he told her, he called from London and said he was going to come back to Italy, surrender, turned state's evidence and reveal the people in the Vatican who had hatched all these major crimes he was involved in. Generally, when you turn state's evidence on the crimes of that level, you get off, and the other people take the fall. And uh, he said he's afraid that the Vatican will try to kill him, but he thought he had enough on them, but they wouldn't dare do it in public. 
That's sort of the way uh, General Noriega feels right now. They won't dare do it. Well, everybody knows I'm here in the prison. And, uh, anybody want to realize that Noriega will survive two months? <laughs> <laughs> two months. Two months? Three, how about three months? No. <laughs> uh, Calvi's son also says the Vatican orders his death. Uh, there's another book written by two Italian journalists who claims the mafia that killed Calvi because he should have changed them on one of the arrow in deals. So there's more than one theory about Calvi. Now uh, the interesting thing is the Knights of Malta include Otto von Habsburg, who's also a member of the Priory of Sion and the president of the Society for the United States of Europe and a direct descendant of Jesus Christ if you believe the genealogies in Holy Blood, Holy Grail. <laughs> so maybe the earth is hollow after all. <laughs> In Costa Rica, there is a farm far, far away, and the farm belonged to a man named John Hull. Mm -hmm. How many people have ever heard of John Hull? Hey, hey, are we getting, are we getting to... <laughs> uh, John Hull is uh, an allegedly former CIA agent, like the eight guys who were running the World Finance Corporation in Miami. The DA claimed he could prove they were all still CIA agents. The CIA claimed they were ex-CIA agents. It seems to me the distinction is very metaphysical. Uh, anybody, it's, uh, it's been uh, since Fouché, at least. It's been common practice in the intelligence business to fire somebody when you want them to do something so bad that you don't want to track back to the agency. So they get fired and they get paid through a numbered bank account in Switzerland and they go on working, but nobody can prove it. And the eight guys who were running the Royal Finance Corporation laundering all that cocaine money seemed to be in that class. And uh, John Hull was probably in that class too. He had a huge farm in Costa Rica. The Costa Rican government has indicted him for using the farm to re illegally receive arms from Ali North, transport the arms to the Contras in Nicaragua, pick up cocaine from the Contras, and ship the cocaine back to Miami. And uh, John Hull left Costa Rica as soon as they indicted him. He disappeared for a while. He was then reported in Miami. The Costa Rican government asked the American government to extradite him. The Justice Department replied that they couldn't find him. It turns out he's living on a ranch in Indiana. But the Justice Department still hasn't gotten around to extraditing him back to Costa Rica. Meanwhile, the Costa Rican government, after further investigation, has indicted John Hull for murder in the La Penca bombing and which several journalists were killed trying to cover an interview, a uh, public statement by a guy who was on the side of the Sandinistas during the revolution against Samosa, decided he didn't like the Sandinista government, joined the Contras, decided he didn't like the Contras and started his own revolution. And he was going to make a statement denouncing the Contras as being a tool of the CIA when the bomb was set that killed several journalists. Uh, the Christic Institute claims to have enough evidence to prove that John Hull and his crowd at the ranch manufactured the bomb. And it was delivered by a CIA agent. The Costa Rican government believes it, and they indicted Hull for the murder. Uh, the media in this country, for some reason, is not interested in John Hull at all. You've got to hunt and I don't know how the hell you people ever found out about John Hull. You've got to hunt and hunt to find stories about the Hull case. Uh, Hull was introduced to Ali North by Dan Quayle. <laughs> now, this was in the LA uh, Times the day Hull was indicted for murder. And I thought, Dan Quayle, now where have I heard that name before? And I remember George Bush, who was persuaded to run for president by Theodore Sheckley. Theodore Sheckley, who was running the Seacourt, Hakeem, Cocaine, and Guns Cartel all those years after Jimmy Carter threw them out of the CIA. Uh, and Theodore Shackley was running this whole goddamn Guns Cocaine thing. Yeah, Theodore Shackley asked Bush to run for president. Bush didn't make it the first time. The next time he ran for president, he said, look at who I select for vice president. That will tell you all about me. Now, you track Dan Quayle's record back, and he was after he got out of the Indiana National Guard, there's a hell of a lot of evidence that while serving in Congress, he was also working for the CIA with the whole and with the Shackley bunch outside the CIA. That's how he got to know John Hall when he introduced to Ali North. Now, if you look at Ali North in his testimony, you will notice that he has a, a certain interesting expression in his eyes. And if you think back, those of you who are old enough, you'll remember another leading figure in 20th century politics who had that kind of expression in his eyes. That was Adolf Hitler, 
who was on cocaine almost continually from 1936 until he died. Adolf Hitler was the biggest coke freak in Europe. He was also taking steroids. And Hitler got more and more of that same book that Ali North has. You know that, I know I'm God, but I'm going to try to pretend I'm not while I take advantage of these schmucks. <laughs> Timothy Leary says, speaking as a scientific psychologist, the effect of cocaine is to make you an obnoxious asshole. <laughs> now, one of the most obnoxious assholes of the 20th century, Hitler and Ali North, right? Okay, <laughs> cocaine psychosis. Uh, one Hall has admitted in testimony to the DEA that she was using cocaine all the time she was working at the White House. Uh, she was dating one of the Contra leaders who was uh, bringing the cocaine up to Hull's ranch and dealing continually with Ali North. So when George Bush says, I'm going to show how bad the problem is, we'll go across the street and buy some cocaine, that's more bullshit. All he had to do was walk down the hall and go over the fucking White House. 